welcome to the Dr. Gundry Podcast. You know, you eat right, you make healthy choices, and you still feel lousy? You're not alone. Not long ago, my guest Gina Hill suffered from migraines, cystic acne, joint pain, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, pulsatile tinnitus, chronic fatigue, and depression, all while eating what she thought was a healthy diet. But when Gina, who is actually a pharmacy technician, learned how to cut lectins from her diet, she was actually able to turn things around. You know, as a result of all this, she created Lectin Free Creations by Gina, a website and an Instagram account with tasty lectin-free recipes, and has even launched a lectin-free revolution in her own community in Warrington, Virginia. Today, we'll discuss what it takes to go lectin-free and how to eat right without feeling deprived. And I think that's a really big issue for everyone embarking on this. So Gina, welcome to the program and happy 50th birthday. Thank you, Dr. Gundry. It's wonderful to be here. I just want to say I owe you a debt of gratitude for everything that the Plant Paradox has done for me in my life. Well, that's, thank you so much. That's actually why I do this. Uh, and you actually flew out here to, to share your experience with us. And I can't thank you enough. And I can't thank you enough for all you're doing, not only in your community, but around the world with your website and your Instagram account, because uh, you're, you're really trying to help people make this work. I am. I'm fantastically fa fascinated by this uh, lectin-free lifestyle, and I enjoy the blogging. Good. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you a blogger before all this? No. No. No, I was not. So you said, oh my gosh, there's something to all this, and i, I got to tell people. I did, and it just went. Okay, so you felt awful, and we off camera talked a little bit mm -hmm. about your experience. And I know this was going on for 40 odd years. Yes. Can you kind of walk back and give us a little scenario of what was happening? Yes. Okay. Um, so, as a child growing up in Ohio, I had cornfields all around me. And we had access to that for our meals. And then uh, as a family of eight on a meager income, we also had a lot of beans, non-pressure cooked beans with the corn and cornbread. That was a main staple. So I did suffer from migraines as a child. I can remember being um, in bed for two to three days at a time with the migraine as a 10 or 11 year old. And then came the chronic um, strep throat and sinus infections and ear infections and of course the antibiotics were frequent as a child and then um by and you had your tonsils out right yes yeah, so by the time i was 16 years old i had such a chronic infection the infection had went so far back in my throat not only my tonsils but a great deal of tissue removed behind my tonsils down into my throat as well. Um, so that was at about the age of 16, and then uh, the acne came afterwards. Mm. That, and I dealt with that until I was lectin free. Now let me ask you, let me go back. What's it like, so you're having migraines as a 10 year old. Yes. Did anybody say, oh come on, you're a 10 year old girl or yes. boy, you're a drama queen. What's the, you don't have migraines. Uh, do people actually you know, take you seriously, or was it? Come on, get out of bed. Let's go. They did. They took me seriously. Really? They. I was actually told that they. It is genetic. That it was a genetic issue. My aunts and uncles and my dad all had the headache, so it was definitely a genetic issue. I was told. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. At least somebody gave you a break. Okay. All right. So then you, so your tonsils are out and you've got lots of antibiotics with that. And yes. then the acne starts. Yes. And what'll, what do people tell you about the acne? Oh, it was just um, hormonal or it's the junk food that you were eating, but I didn't eat a lot of junk food. Um, but it was just something that I couldn't find a solution to. And they wanted to put you on a medication. 
Um, not at that point oh. until I was older. Later. And then um, I guess by my early 30s, I had come in contact with a tick, I guess, and I got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Mm. Um, it was devastating for me and I got fed more antibiotics. And um, then along came the fibromyalgia. The migraines intensified um, a lot of face pain and ocular pain as well. It was very difficult to live in that state. It was probably one of the worst times of my life to live with the symptoms of the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, now, are you still in Ohio at this point? Or? Now, um, we're a military family. My husband is a retired Marine. So the we lived in North Carolina, oh, okay. where the presence of the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever tick is large there. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting lots of antibiotics for that. Mm -hmm. And are you actually working during all this? Um, I was in school to be a dental assistant and I made it through the program dealing with the pain as well. And I ended up not doing anything with it because um, I was just too sick. And then from there, I ended up um, with not too long after that, the thyroid pain started. So I did feel this knot and the tightness in my thyroid, and I just chose not to do anything about it at that point. I just tried to ignore those. I really didn't know what it was. And did you ask, you know, your doctor about all this, or you're just, I'm, I'm not going to mention it, I've got enough worries? Uh... No, I didn't. I didn't mention it at all. I just knew that it was a problem. It was a new issue. Um, then by my late 30s, I had gotten the flu and was fed more antibiotics. For the flu? Yes, yes. That works well. It destroyed <laughs> me. This is when the mucus started. This is when it w became a real problem for me. The mucus was the worst. I had severe post-nasal drip when I slept. It kept me awake. I was having to blow my nose frequently, and I was um, clearing my throat and my chest when I consumed, now that I know what it was, lectins. Ah. So when I would consume my, my high-grain diet, the mucus would fill up in my lungs and I was having a hard time breathing. And I was, I was so sensitive to it all. And it was, um, it was very, um, it was not pleasant to be around me. Now, were people telling you, well, these are just allergies, uh, it's hay fever or it's pollen thing. Yes. You live in North Carolina. Yes. Um, did people yes. want to give you things for this? Or? Um, I had went to a pulmonologist yeah, okay. and they did testing, which I passed all of them. They gave me a no, no, nasal spray and an inhaler mm -hmm. for that. An inhaler? Yes. Okay. So the mucus formation stayed with me um, all the way from my late 30s till when I went lectin free. It actually had gotten worse, um, but at that time when the mucus started, the doctor gave me Prilosec. Ah, great idea. Omeprazole, purple pill, so we all know what that is. Um, so by the time I had gotten the medication, the mucus problems had turned into uh, really a severe burning in my sinuses. So, and my throat had become raw, and my, um, just, I never had a moment to where my lungs felt clear. And um, so I did, I was put on the Prilosec, and then by my early 40s, I had so much of the mucus formation that it was starting to affect my eustachian tube. So I was hearing my pulse, and they call that pulsatile tinnitus. And um, that was just another issue, so they just kept compounding from there. And then what happened? Oh, or isn't that enough? Shortly after that, the pain in my throat had gotten so um, painful that I did go to the doctor. I'd never been to an endocrinologist before, so I didn't understand what was going on. They did a CAT scan of my thyroid and told me I had Hashimoto's. I had never heard of that before. I didn't understand what it was, and that I was hypothyroid as well. 
I was given Synthroid, mm -hmm. and which I ended up later changing myself to Armor. Okay. I didn't like the side effects of the Synthroid. And also at that visit with the endocrinologist, they discovered a nodule, and I didn't know what that was either. It was in the right side of my thyroid. They kept a close eye on it, and it grew at a fast rate. Um, by 2013, it had started causing compression on my esophagus, and I was having a hard time breathing at night. So, they so then what happened? I had a thyroidectomy and the a partial partial right. thyroidectomy and the isthmus removed as well. Mm -hmm. And then almost immediately the growth started in the left side. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm yet to do a follow up since being lectin free to see how that nodule is doing. So I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. So I mean this is this is, you know, you're an unmitigated disaster. Yes. And your, your eating during all this time really hasn't changed. You're eating what you think is healthy. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody or did you say, gee, could it be the food that I'm eating? No. Nobody looked at food. Nobody looked at me as a whole. Nope. And then, so how did you find the plant paradox? Um, actually, my husband had seen a commercial first, and he's very familiar with my illnesses, and he came home to show me the video, and he couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, so he's very disappointed that he couldn't show me, but I found it the next day. It was a banner across the YouTube. Ah. Is this the food that is hurting you, and then the smashed tomato that we're all familiar with? And... I played the video and played it again and played it again and ordered the book and it came to the house and I did not get off the couch for two days while I read that book. Neat. Yeah. And yes. did light bulbs start going off? It went off and I knew it was the answer for me. Yes. So, all right. So you, you think you found the answer and you go, oh my gosh, that's, that's me in there. There's mm -hmm. people just like me and... Uh, did you go cold turkey, lectin-free, or what'd you do? I went cold turkey, and I did not have a problem with it at all. I came up with a plan. I knew that I had to open those pantry doors, and I had three bags, one for trash, one for giveaway to my neighbor, and one for return it to the grocery store and see if I can get my money back. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so that was my plan. It was a lot. Yeah. It was a major part of my diet. That's what I ate was grain and beans, non-pressure cooked beans. Right. Ezekiel bread. Oh, yeah, Ezekiel bread. Yes. yes. Cashew. Oh, cashew yeah. nuts. Yeah. Um, cashew cheeses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ezekiel bread. It's interesting. People... And I, you know, I try to document this in all my books with research studies that have been done, but mm -hmm. sprouted grains are actually higher in lectin content than unsprouted grains. Isn't that and one of the interesting things is plant doesn't want its babies to be eaten, which seems obvious, but none of us think about that. Mm -hmm. And the newborn baby, the little sprouted grain, is actually at its most vulnerable. And so the plant actually, the baby produces more lectins at that point to dissuade the animal from eating it. And actually, just as an aside, alfalfa sprouts are some of the most toxic foods that you can eat because of their incredibly high lectin content. Okay. So, sorry about that. Yes, yeah. I was having it every day. Yeah. Yeah, with peanut butter. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is all healthy. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, this is all healthy, healthy yeah. for you. And you're going, I am doing everything right in, yes. you know, I am the most miserable human being I know. I, I was. I just. I got to the point by the time I was 47, I just didn't want to be around anymore. Just questioning why I wanted to be here. So at that point, about right before I found the plant paradox, um, I was 47, and I had visited many doctors. 
um, I was seeing a pulmonologist. Right. The orthopedic for the pain in my knee and my hips had gotten so bad. Yeah, we, we didn't even talk about that. So no. now you've got hip and knee pain? Yes. Yeah, so I was dealing with that. I didn't think I was too old. Yeah. I, I didn't look it, but I and felt it. And are people it. saying, oh, well, you're just getting old? Uh, they did. Um, but I didn't want to accept it. I knew there was another option for me. So the knee, the knee pain, the hip pain, visiting the orthopedic, the pulmonologist still for the phlegm, yeah. um, the uh, endocrinologist again, right before I went plant paradox, and they did another endoscopy. And that's when they found a stomach polyp. Gotcha. I have that one, a single stomach polyp. So that kind of scared me a little bit. Um, I've seen a rheumatologist, so I got an official diagnosis of fibromyalgia and a prescription for more medication. I think the gabapentin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. And what did the gabapentin that. do for you? Or it made me very dizzy and nauseous. I just wanted to lay around. I didn't like that. I think I took that twice, and I said, "This isn't for me. I have to find another option." So what? Okay, so you went cold turkey. I did. And so what happened? What is, what's uh, the first thing you noticed? Great things. No more mucus. How, how fast did that happen? Immediately. Yeah. I, I'm extremely lectin sensitive. I can smell a white glass of wine and I have mucus formation. Neat. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can detect when the restaurant is lying to me immediately I know that that's not olive oil. Um, the mucus formation happens. And so right away, no mucus. I didn't have to blow my nose. I wasn't going through a box of tissues a week. Wasn't clearing my throat, which allowed my throat to heal. So no mucus, wonderful. I could sleep at night. I wasn't having post-nasal drip. Um, within three days, guess what? No more headache. Amazing. So not just the headache. When you deal with fibromyalgia headaches, it can be very ocular and the face pain that I was having. So into my cheekbones and my sinuses, all of that that I was dealing with within three days was gone. Yes. Now, this has got to be a placebo effect. You, you read a book that says everything's going to be fine if you stop eating these things. And lo and behold, everything was fine. It was. It did exactly what you said it was going to do. So, so was, and, but you've obviously tested on, the, yes. on yourself. So when a mischief food enters your mouth, maybe at a restaurant, for instance, mm -hmm. you're, you can, you know instantly, huh? Instantly. Instantly, yes. And so you're not, you're, you're sure you're not crazy? No. And that you, this isn't, you're making this up. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I've even tested it. Um, and my husband will vouch to be in a restaurant and then call the waiter over and say, I need to know if this is not olive oil. Yes, it's olive oil, ma'am. It is olive oil. I said, I need you to check on the bottle. And he comes back and he says, no, it does say it's a blend. It's a blend of olive oil and canola oil. My body detects that. It's, it's great. I'm glad I have this built-in system. Now you're glad. Yes, now I'm glad. It's, it's very beneficial. I think everybody should eat the lectin-free lifestyle. Well, I think that's a, really, uh, that's a really good point. And maybe we'll stop for a second and talk about that. Um, a couple of years ago when the plant paradox came out, I was lecturing at Harvard on actually nerve health and brain health. And one of a distinguished professor um, said, well, you're saying that everybody should you know, eat lectin free. And I said, yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. And he said, well, what's, what's wrong with the advice that everything should be eaten in moderation. Mm. And he said, isn't that a better argument? And I said, well, I have nothing wrong with that if you want moderate arthritis, moderate heart disease, mm. moderate dementia. Great. Mm. And I said, but do you really want you know, moderate arthritis and heart disease? Of course not. No. And I think what's, what's really interesting, you're obviously what I describe as a canary. Yes. And the canary in the coal mine. Yes. 
and you know, bless you for being a canary. Uh, my canaries have taught me most everything I, I know about all this. Yes. So you guys react to these things, lectins, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So you feel the things that I and now others have suggested are going on in all of us, but we just unfortunately don't feel them the way you do. Correct. Um, and we could use the word clairvoyant, I don't think that's right, but you, you, you feel these things. I call it hypersensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great way. Yeah. And I think what, what you guys have taught me is, particularly now with the really modern blood tests, looking at leaky gut, looking at inflammation, uh, looking at what's happening in the brain, on arteries, we can see that when we take lectins away from people, mm -hmm. that we can, even if they don't feel the difference, most people do, but even if they don't feel it, we can see it um, mm -hmm. on a blood test. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, yesterday, we, uh, I saw a woman, actually in her, her, in her late 60s, who had had Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Mm -hmm. She doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do this test called a pulse test, and I have no relationship with them, P-U-L-S, that really looks at markers for your chance of a heart attack in the next five years. Mm -hmm. And one of the markers I've written about is called IL-16. And IL-16 is an autoimmune attack on the inside of our blood vessels. And <laughs> given two papers that I suggest that it's lectins that cause this. And when lectins are taken out of the diet, we see IL-16 drop dramatically. And so this woman, we're looking at her pulse test and her score for having a heart attack in the next five years drops in half. And we compare her first one with this one and her IL-16 drop dramatically. And I said, look at that, your, you know, your risk of having a heart attack went from remarkably high. Six months later, you now have minimal risk of a heart attack. Did you, you know, and you didn't feel the fact that your risk for a heart attack went down. Um, that wasn't evident, but we can see it mm -hmm. on a blood test. Mm -hmm. So bless you uh, for you know, teaching all of us Number one, that you're not crazy, mm -hmm. and that you're just, you know, you're really good. Uh, you're a Geiger counter. I am a Geiger counter, <laughs> yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so yes. that, that's, so, uh, so you, okay, so now all of a sudden, so your acne clears. Yes, so after three days, the headache cleared, and then a week, that gave uh, my throat enough time to heal. I didn't have the raw throat anymore, so that was a bonus for me to not have to deal with that soreness. And, um, gosh, I remember the day three months later. This is so exciting. I'll never forget this day. I went to clip my nails. And I had a wonderful, beautiful line of demarcation across my fingernails. And I got to looking what would kind of confuse me at first. I had never seen anything like this before. I could see the dead tissue up front and the new, healthy, shiny tissue in the back. And so I looked down to look at my toes, and I saw the same thing on my toes. That's when I knew my gut was healing and my microbiome was thriving. So I ran downstairs to tell my husband, look, 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 this is working. Um, I'm doing, going to do this the rest of my life. And um, I was so excited to see that that was healing. That was proof for me. Was he excited about oh, that? Oh, he's so excited, yes. He's been very supportive of me always, especially with the plant paradox. I couldn't have done this without him, actually. He sees the difference, um, especially when at the point of being lectin-free. Um, after the thyroid supplementation, I think I added about uh, six months into being lectin-free, I could just still feel that uh, pain in my throat, and I knew I needed some thyroid supplementation. So 
I had implemented some supplements. And then after I did that, really the depression lifted to mm -hmm. have the, the support that I needed for thyroid. And um, he was excited to see that change in me. The depression, a little more friendlier and um, just all around a better person to be around. So it really affects you when you're sick. It's, it's hard what you can put people through. Well, and, and pain is mm -hmm. one of the most depressing things there is, particularly if you don't see a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. All right, so you, you see the difference. Uh, we talked before off camera, uh, you know, one of my kind of favorite teachings from Hippocrates was, was about this green life force energy. Yes. And you obviously, as hokey as it sounds, have experienced this have. green life force energy. Yes, so fascinating to feel how your body can feel when you remove the external forces that are causing the damage to your body. Um, to have that energy, to feel so powerful. And I felt powerful and I blogged about my power and I'll never forget the day that I wanted a bicycle now. Huh? I have energy, let's go do this. So I, we got a bicycle and I posted about that too. So, yes. yeah, because you didn't want to get on a bicycle because uh, you didn't have any energy. get up and go. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the green life force energy was with me and I loved it. And you know, it sounds hokey and I, you know, even as I was writing about it in The Plant Paradox, I said, boy, this is really hokey. It's so touchy-feely California. Um, but, you know, Hippocrates, actually, you know, who was the father of medicine, and he, you know, I learned from him that all disease begins in the gut and all disease ends in the gut. Yes. But, again, I think it's worth mentioning for people who haven't heard this or haven't read the book. Hippocrates said that all creatures have this intrinsic desire, ability for perfect health. That's part of our nature. Mm -hmm. And he called it the green life force energy. That's the translation from Greek. And he felt that there were external forces that were preventing this expression of green life force energy and that a physician was supposed to find what those external forces were mm. and remove them mm. and once those forces were removed that the body the green life force energy would heal you know the body itself mm -hmm. and so a physician was just supposed to be a detective mm -hmm. and i think if there's one thing that i've taken to heart thanks to people like you mm -hmm. is i'm just a detective and you and everybody who's listening to us mm -hmm. has the power to heal themselves um, once we get these little mischief makers away from us. Yes, those invaders. All right, so, yes. so you start a blog yes. to tell everybody, hey guys, you know, uh, this is, actually works. Um, I was just posting some food and before I knew it, um, I was um, an inspiration to others and they were telling me you know uh, you make this so much easier you're so inspiring thank you for all of your videos and everybody knows I like to include music with my my little stories and so I just make it fun and um, I don't ever claim to be the best cook but I really I, I love everyone everyone knows that about me and um, just try to inspire others to stick with this because it really is life changing. Are you a mu musician or you just like music? No, I just like music. I think when I'm in the cook and cook in the kitchen cooking for a long period of time, music or a Dr. Gundry podcast helps pass the time. <coughs> so, no, and I like to make my videos fun, so I always include the music. Yes. So, what are your favorite lectin-free recipes? You got any? I do. Um, I think one of my favorites is one of your favorites. So yes, the mango, green mango and pear salad. Oh yeah. 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 You got the cabbage. It's wonderful. I love that one. And so simple and basic in, in the beginning is the, um, the raw mushroom soup. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love that one. 
and one that I created myself. You'll have to try this. Penny will have to make this. Um, I She's not going to make it. I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I created She's a recipe. My, She's my prep chef. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, Go ahead. From the Heart Defense product, the Gundry MD Heart Defense yeah. product is wonderful to bake with. So I made some Gundry MD Heart Defense bars. Um, they're delicious. It's on my website. Uh, All right. Lectinfreecreations.com. Yes. And have you Instagrammed about that as well? Yes. Okay. I have. So we can find it at either spot. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Good. So you work at a health food store now? I do. I work at the Natural Marketplace in Warrington, Virginia. It's a wonderful, magical store owned and operated by Shelley Ross for the last 30 years. Yes, we're a wonderful organic health food store with clean supplements and an organic deli upstairs and a wonderful staff. And you actually have a lectin-free area. That's correct. Shelly is amazing and was very open and receptive to my idea when I came to her. She was already familiar with Dr. Gundry and the Plant Paradox. I think she was using your products too. Ah, okay. Yes. So I told her my idea, what I wanted to do, and of course she gave me thumbs up, let's do it right away, and I had to move some things around, make room for the lectin-free groceries, and I worked with our administrative staff. She did a wonderful job at creating lectin-free stickers to put on the shelf tags, and um, ordered the books, was able to keep them in the store and work with the customers uh, when they came in. I worked personally with uh, individuals. We have a lot of sick people in Warrington, Warrington with all of the same issues that I have. So I'm very, very familiar with them all. So of course, anybody with those issues, and there was a lot of them, I was able to direct them towards the plant paradox, show them the groceries and um, so could somebody who's not in Warrington, Virginia, who have, wants to get some lectin-free products into mm -hmm. their health food store mm -hmm. or even their grocery store, how, how would they go about it? How, how did you do this? Uh, definitely, every store has a, a grocery buyer. Uh, I would contact that grocery buyer directly and take your yes list with you, maybe even take the Plant Paradox book with you and tell them that this is just, this is a worldwide movement. It's not just for me personally. There are millions of people with success stories living the Plant Paradox lifestyle. And um, I just request them and they, they're willing to work with you to bring in the, the compliant groceries. And I would also, I've already done this, I'm talking with Thrive Market to please put a lectin-free tab in your search engine. Good for you. Yeah, so That's everybody great. out there needs great. to contact Thrive Market. Yeah, and you bring up an interesting point. Yes. This is not conjecture. There are millions of people who have the book, who follow this. So this is not a little, this is not, you know, little Gina in Warrington, Virginia or the person who's walking into a grocery store in Des Moines, Iowa. Now this is, this is a huge movement and good for you for pushing it. Thank you. All right. Okay. You, I know you've done this, but people write you or question you. How, how do you start implementing this? Definitely. Can somebody do this without having four trash cans and stuff? <laughs> yes, but it's very important to read the book as a whole so that you can understand why you want to do this. Um, if you don't read the book, you're going to be asking food bloggers, what can't I have in phase one? Well, did you get the book? <laughs> so it's very important to read the book in its entirety to get your why. And then once you have your why, it's easier to stay with the program and then also to um, Really, it, it helps to uh, blog about it, to journal about it. So get your journal and take photographs. So take photographs of the things that you're hoping that'll change. I wish I had done that. Um, for instance, my eyebrows. I, people with Hashimoto's are missing the third outer part of their eyebrow. And I have that, it came back. 
So I had a lot of thinness in my scalp, um, and that is starting to grow back as well now at my ferritin level is at a normal range. Um, I would have taken better photographs of my skin, the before, uh, before and after. So, and, uh, yeah. and you have gorgeous skin, and you're trying to tell me that this was not you of a few years ago. No, absolutely not. I had deep creases on both sides of my cheeks, um, really that ran several inches. Um, and the, the age spots, a lot of the age spots are gone now. Age spots go away? Yeah. You mean you're actually de-aging? That's come right. On. Yes. Come on. I, I have been told. Ah, yes. I see. Yes. And I mean, you literally had cystic ac acne. Yes. Right? So I'm dealing with the scarring. Um, I'm using a, a derma roller right now yeah, okay. and some vitamin C repair serum okay. on that. Um, I m mainly had it in my chin area. It mm. didn't affect me in my cheeks, but I'm dealing with some scarring. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're like, you know, like Dr. Terry Walls, who was basically was in a wheelchair wow. as a physician doing all the right things and on multiple medications for MS mm -hmm. and told, well, you know, you have progressive MS and, you know, this is your life. Right. And now, of course, she can ride a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And it's by eating, you know, nine cups of vegetables a day. Mm -hmm. And I've convinced her that those vegetables shouldn't have lectins in them. And I think she and I agree about that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is, you're a living example that there are foods that are killing you or at least making your life miserable mm -hmm. and removing those foods gives you a whole new life. Yes, yeah. yes. Do uh, you follow other lectin-free people for inspiration? I do. You, I love them all. You want to mention a few? Yes. Um, first, everybody is wonderful. They all have wonderful recipes. I think the, the some of my favorites, of course, are Nona Stewart, Plant Paradox Farmer, Nona. Yeah. Yes, wonderful. I can't wait until she decides to make a farmhouse cookbook. I love her recipe. She's, I used to inspire her in the beginning. Now she inspires me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we've become pretty good friends, Instagram friends, and made a couple phone calls from Canada to Canada. Um, and then, um, of course, Ralph and Steve, the Plant Paradox Boys, or MYX Inc., um, always enjoying seeing their travel photos. And of course, then uh, Lectin Free Mama, of course, wonderful website with tips for beginners, great recipes that are simple and easy. I followed her from the beginning. I enjoy making many of her meals. And then, of course, I'm Lectin Free Gourmet, Christine. Yeah, yeah. Look what she's done with all of that sourdough bread <laughs> that she's got going on over there. Yeah. I can't wait to get into that when I get back home. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the community uh, obviously keeps growing and growing. Yes. And, you know, this is, this is a movement uh, and it, it's real. And the wonderful thing, you know, if I, if I look back, it's like, all of you guys who have embraced this, I, I give you guys so much credit for, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna keep this for myself. I'm, I'm gonna you know, help others. And obviously, that's why I changed my career to do this. Because mm -hmm. you know, think about you know, all these sites now and all the people you're helping mm -hmm. and that this is something that people can do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it takes some work. Uh, it does. But, and I tell people, you're gonna hate me for two weeks uh, and then you're gonna probably start liking me. Um, but it, it does take some work. And it, it takes, for you, it was a leap of faith. Um, sure. It's like, okay, you know, everything's out, I'm gonna do this. But the neat thing, particularly for you, you know, three days your mucus is gone. You go, yes. what's with that? Yes. Um, I yes. wrote about a guy uh, who helped his wife it's actually in the plant paradox. Um, she had rheumatoid arthritis, and after her first pregnancy, and uh -huh. was put on these drugs. Right. And she wanted to have another baby, and okay. knew there was no way she was going to bring a baby into this world while on these immunosuppressant medications. Okay. So mm -hmm. we worked with her. And her husband was incredibly supportive, 
and very vigorous, virile guy. And he says, okay, I'm all in. We're gonna, we're gonna eat the exact same way. Saw them after six months and she, you know, I've written about her. She's had another beautiful baby and it was never flared. But he comes in after, with the first visit and he says, hey doc, you know, uh, you know I'm, I've lost 15 pounds. I didn't need to, but you know, I'm so buff now. But I gotta tell you, I've had chronic sinus congestion all my life. Mm -hmm. I've had my sinuses ablated. I've been taking antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And that was just me. Mm -hmm. He says, I gotta tell you, and you should tell people, your sinus will clear up. And I said, well, oh. yeah, actually, I know that. And he said, no, 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 you should really tell them. The sinuses clear up. I yes. said, yes, you're, you're right. Yes. And it's, yeah, it's, your sinuses will clear up. Yes, yes. They do. I do, however, think that I'm one of those, your canaries that um, shouldn't have sheep or goat cheese as well. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, there are, we now have these really cool testing for dairy sensitivity among mm -hmm. other things and there are a subset of my patients who react to casein a1 they react to casein a2 and they react away mm -hmm. and just throw it out mm -hmm. uh, you're probably one of the reactors yes. uh, don't you know don't there's no human need for cheese okay. um, as you know there's there was an interesting book years ago that women there's these really cool opioid-like compounds in cheese that go right particularly to women's brains and go happy, 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 happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is an addictive quality to cheese just like there is an addictive quality to bread mm -hmm. because of the same, uh, it's called morphines, caseomorphines. But yeah, so just give cheese the boot. It's okay. It's okay, yeah. yes. Okay, we have got to wrap it up, but in the meantime, you have some questions for me. I do. All right, let's hear it. All right, so it turns out that I'm homozygous for the MTHFR gene mutation or variation. The mother effer gene. Yes, yes. it is. Does that mean that I am or can be more lectin sensitive than somebody that's heterozygous or non-carrier? You know, I, a lot of people, particularly who write in this area, want to kind of blame everything that's ever happened to them, mm -hmm. whether it's depression, anxiety, addiction, on the fact that they're either homozygous or even heterozygous for the MTHFR mutation. Mm -hmm. There is some interesting evidence that if you look at family histories of these mutations, particularly for the double mutations, mm -hmm. that there is an increased anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. ADHD, bipolar, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and drug abuse and alcohol. What's cool about this mm -hmm. is you can fix this mm -hmm. with methyl B12, methyl cobalamin, mm -hmm. and methyl folate. Yes. And one of the things I keep telling people, you got to get the sublingual form of methyl cobalamin, methyl okay. B12. Okay. So many yes. people with this mutation also lack what's called an intrinsic factor that allows you to absorb B12 the okay. from your intestines. If you put it some way, well, it'll bypass it. And I measure B12 levels in every human being every three to six months. And I know exactly who are the ones who are putting it under the tongue. I know exactly who are chewing it or okay. sucking on it. I know exactly who's swallowing it. Okay. And when we actually make them put it under their tongue, okay. their levels come up. Thank you for telling me that because yeah. I chew on it. Don't and chew it. Swallow it. Put it under your tongue. Okay. And it'll actually make a difference. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We, we can see it. It's fascinating. So my dad died at 49 of heart disease. So since I carry both genes, the MTHFR, I imagine he had the one that leaves you susceptible to heart disease. Yeah, Maybe. but again, it's fixable. So yes. this is this you is just a, didn't know. a good news thing. Yeah, this is yeah. a fixable problem. Yes. Okay, my next question is when, how, how will living a lectin-free lifestyle affect the stomach polyp? 
So we've had actually a number of people with not only stomach polyps, but um, gallbladder polyps. Yeah. And they, uh, knock on wood, have resolved with going lectin-free. Mm -hmm. Don't have a time period for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we see most people with polyps, totally different subject, have very high insulin levels. And you may have never had your fasting insulin level measured, mm -hmm. but uh, insulin is one of the biggest drivers to polyp formation, particularly in the colon or in the stomach. So let's see what happens. Okay. Um, you don't you don't have to go have your stomach polyp removed. Okay. You should, because of the potential for a polyp to have precancerous changes, you mm -hmm. should at least watch this and mm -hmm. maybe even have a biopsy of it. Okay. But we're not dispensing medical advice on this program. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, what supplements would you recommend to help me with the only issue I still have left? So I have a little bit of muscle cramping in my calves and my uh, feet mm -hmm. and um, muscle recovery issues. And I've tried doing the magnesium and potassium and the branch chain amino acids. Mm -hmm. And you have you even used the magnesium oil spray? Yes. Okay, and that doesn't help you? No. Most people who are getting muscle cramps who go on our program mm -hmm. are doing it because they're eliminating simple sugars. And one of the interesting things is we store sugar in our muscles in the form of glycogen. Okay. And when we eliminate sugars uh, from our diet, which the plant paradox does, we use up all the glycogen in our muscles. And the glycogen is stored with a water molecule and it's stored with magnesium and with potassium. Mm -hmm. And so those actually leave with the glycogen. And so when somebody calls me or one of my patients says, oh my gosh, I got the worst cramps in my legs, you know, at night and it's waking me up and I'll go, this is great news, you are following the program. And they look at me like, well, what do you mean? You know, I'm, I'm having cramps. I said, yeah, you're actually eliminating sugar from your diet. Mm. One thing to think about is you can actually, you don't have a weight problem. You can actually add more resistant starches, have some more millet, have some more sorghum, and see if that helps you. And okay. even particularly into your evening meal. And okay. See what happens with okay, that. Okay, I'll let you know. All right, let me know. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for coming all this way and it's coming my to pleasure. visit. And thank you for everything you're doing. Um, people need to know, and particularly, you know, I get on my horse about this. Women need to know that the you guys aren't crazy. These are real things. It is. And you've got to keep asking mm -hmm. for why is this happening to me and you've been through the gamut of all these specialists and I know from personal experience no one ever asked you about what are you eating no um, mm -hmm. yeah and so you, you gotta find someone who will listen to mm -hmm. you and if nobody will listen to you then go to your Instagram go to your website and you know and go to all the other sites and we're, you know, we're all in this together. And thank you and on all your other fellow bloggers for doing all this. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Bigger things to come. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, this is truly a movement. Yes, it yeah. is a movement. Yeah. And it has to come, you know, it has to come from the ground level. The government's not going to help us. Um, insurance companies aren't going to help us. Mm -mm. Medical schools are not going to help us. Yeah. And certainly the drug companies are not going to help us. <laughs> so, yeah, good for you. Thank you. All right. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. And really, go f go find her Instagram account. What's the website again? Lectinfreecreations.com. And on Instagram, I'm at lectinfreecreations. All right. You heard it. Uh, check her out. Check out all her other great bloggers. And I will see you next week on the Dr. Gundry Podcast. See ya. Thanks. <laughs>